to introduce somebody to you this morning, someone that I have gotten to know, Sophia Nelson. Would you come on up here? Sophia is an I'll stay here with me. Sophia is an award-winning journalist and author. I'm going to call you, you didn't say this, but a motivational speaker, and um, she's a recovering attorney. Um, she's an available bachelorette. You can send all requests to me. That goes through me. Come see me after service. But uh, Sophia has written uh, several books. Your first book I just learned the other night was... was Black Woman Redefined, her, her second book was The Woman Code, and she came here and actually spoke to at one of our women's events. It was a, was a wonderful time. And she has just getting ready to release her third book, which she wrote in four and a half months. I mean, that's crazy. It took me six years to write my thesis. Four and a half months, this third book. And um, I'm just excited to be able to talk with her. This morning. We're going to have a little bit of conversation, but um, we have a microphone yet. Yeah. Do I see, is, is your mom here? Say something about her. Have her stand up or something. Mom, stand up and just wave at everybody if you That's would, Sandy. Mom. This is Sophia's mom. And you got family, your brother. My brother, Ron. my best friends here. As you know, I had a big birthday party last night, and you were there, and I came in the door, and Pastor Charlie was trying to do the wobble, you guys, so I just want you to know. <laughs> I caught it out the corner of my eye, and I went, is that Pastor Charlie doing the wobble? It was awesome. Anyway. I'm okay. doing the questions, okay? I'm so sorry. you just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I got you in trouble. He's a good dancer. Jill's no. better, but. This is a dancing church. I'm not in trouble, so. <laughs> Um, so just because we have talked and, um, you said, you know, this, we have different faith backgrounds mm -hmm. and you said, I, I, you know, this isn't the style and type of church that I could see myself in. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I really feel like this is the church that God's called me to. So you're, you're joining the church. You're in the process of going through grow. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yes, we're excited about that. Um, with our differences, though, how, how are we sitting here? How, how did that happen? Yeah. Well, Vanessa Maddox, y'all know Vanessa. She brought me here about four years ago to one of the evening, um, your candlelight Christmas Eve services you have. And that really took me back because in my faith tradition, much more conservative, we never had Christmas service or Christmas Eve. So that was the first thing I thought was kind of cool. And I really liked the lights thing that you did in the dark. That was good. And then <laughs> I, would, I would sneak in from time to time, literally sneak in because I didn't feel like I could tell anybody I was sneaking in because of how I was raised and what I believe. I mean, no music, more conservative women's roles, things, but I saw something different here. And ultimately I got to meet you and Jill and a relationship started. I got to meet some other people. I went to a couple of the GROW classes. Um, I'm a busy journalist, so I'm not around a lot. And um, then Jill had me speak last January at your women's event for the Woman Code, and the women here were awesome. And um, of course, got to know you better, and this church is special, I think, because how many of you know that Sunday morning is the most segregated time in our country? We worship black churches, white churches, Asian churches, whatever. This church, look around you. This is something different you have here. This is a diverse church. This is what heaven's going to look like. It's going to be all of us, one. Amen. 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 So... I don't think you could have. So this tomorrow, you're having a, a signing day for your book at Barnes and Noble and Tyson's. Big event and, in big honor of Dr. King's birthday. And then it's nationally released Tuesday. So mm -hmm. just a big, big weekend for you. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you could have planned naturally uh, the timing of this book. Uh, God definitely had His hand in it, um, and I want to talk a, a little bit about it. It's called uh, e, e Pluribus One, and let's just start. You've got to be smart if you title your book E Pluribus One. I'm like, <laughs> Sophia, what's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> 
So let's just start there. You, you know, you're making me nervous because I'm thinking I assumed everybody knew that e pluribus unum out of many one is our national motto. I hope they do anyway. But yes, I translated the word one for you because I wanted everybody to see that word one. And I was thinking, I was telling Jill when we're sitting down there, as you were reading the scriptures, I was going, man, I should have opened with some of that in the freedom of religion chapter. I definitely talk about the faith because America was founded as a Christian nation. I know people argue about that, but there's not an argument. The founding fathers were very clear about the freedom of faith. And so this oneness and this unity of our motto, the scriptures laid it out perfectly. God upgraded the covenant, as you said. The founders had a great vision, right, of this great nation. But when it started, it wasn't right. We had slaves. Women were chattel and property. We couldn't act. We were behind walls, as you said. It was only for white males. But through time and through we the people challenging our leaders, making that Constitution stand up, and as Dr. King said, there's a check that's due. There's a promissory note, and you haven't given it to all of your citizens yet. That's what makes America so special and so unique. We ultimately get it right. We get it right. Hmm. So out of many, one. yeah, you can, out of many, one, our motto, yep. out of many, one. So <laughs> you, you're a big fan. This is basically a, a historical book, right? History. Well, no, it, it is, but it's political inspiration. What I wanted to do was inspire the country to, in a time of fear, division, anger, protest, y'all know what's going on. You see the same things on your TV I do. It was divine. I wanted to, it is historical. It is about the Constitution, our founders, but it's also to make you feel good about who you are as an American. It's going to be okay. It's all right. Hmm. So when you, just quickly, we can save the applause at the end, okay? We'll give her a round of applause. Oprah. <laughs> My name for you is Oprah. <laughs> so you're a big fan of the, of the founding fathers, and mm -hmm. yet they had slaves. They, and, and, but you were saying the thing that they got right was the vision. And how time and time again in the American history when we've, we've missed it, we failed. We get it right. We eventually get it right. You give us an example of that? Well, there are plenty, but think of these words Thomas Jefferson pens in 1775 before 1776, and we declare independence. He says, We hold these truths to be self evident that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Jefferson owns 300 human beings. He has a long-term relationship with one of his slaves that we know they had children together. Yet here's a man who actually opposed slavery. He did. John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, and Thomas Jefferson were three of the men that stood up at the Constitutional Convention and said, slavery's wrong, we ought to get rid of it. Look at the conflict in Jefferson's life. He knows it's wrong, but he's also a planter. You've been to Monticello, you've seen it. It's economics. The Southern delegates have cotton. Cotton is the biggest textile in the world at the time. We're the biggest supplier of it. So these good men who feared God, who believed that all men were created equal, and all of them, many of them Christian men, had slaves. And so, the thing about them, though, that's redeeming is that they laid out this amazing thing called the Constitution. And the Constitution lives and breathes. And Virginia, this year, 50 years to the day, Loving versus Virginia was decided. It's a historic case. You can go see the movie that's up for Golden Globes, Tearjerker. White man falls in love with a black woman in Caroline County, Virginia. In 1967, they can't be married in the Commonwealth of Virginia because there are miscegenation laws forbidding the marriage between blacks and whites. They take it to the Supreme Court, two country folks, poor people, working people, but they loved each other. The Supreme Court, who at that time, Thurgood Marshall's a new justice, the first black justice on the Supreme Court, all of them are in my book. My point is, 
we get it right because we, the people, challenge and we make our documents work. We're a republic. And I get mad when people say we're a democracy. We're not. We're a republic. And that means the government is invested in we, the people. And we've forgotten that when 50% of us don't even vote anymore. Hmm. So your book, you've got some copies, pre-copies before it goes public. Are gonna be, you're going to be out in the North X. Um, I want you to go by, see her, maybe get a signed copy, and just meet one of our brand new members in our church, okay? Uh, I really think that, um, actually, before we do that, you got to share one more story because this is, this is personal mm -hmm. to you. Yeah. Tell us about your, your great-grandfather. Okay. Well, I was talking about the Loving versus Virginia case. My great-grandfather and grandmother on my father's side are from South Carolina and a little small town called Ridgeway. I'm sure your parents might know where it is because they're from there. Um, and um, he was a white man and she was a black woman. And in the 1920s, they obviously could not be married. Um, so they had to leave and go to New Jersey, which is where they settled. And then they uh, got married and had children and um, the result of that progeny there. And um, I think they'd be real proud if they were here today to see me talking about a book about bringing us together and uniting our country. Our country's in some distress right now. They say we're divided. I reject that notion. I don't think we're divided. I think we disagree on some things. I think we're protesting in the streets. I think we're raising our voices. Guess what? That's what we do in America. That's what we do. No other place on earth, Charlie, is like us. And don't ever let anybody tell you your country's broken or we aren't going to get past this. Don't let race be a dividing wall. Don't let gender be. We're Christians. And he read those scriptures, and I was... I hadn't read those scriptures in a long time. Did you see the word one kept coming up? One, unity, not division. So I'm excited about this. You can catch me on C-SPAN in the morning. I'll be taking calls from all the crazies around the country. <laughs> God only knows what you get when you're on C-SPAN in the morning, but it's, I'm ready for it. And then we're going to do Fox and Friends. We'll do Morning Joe. I'll be on Good Morning America, all that. So. Really, Representing Jesus, doing my best. Man, I really think that the hand of the Lord is on Sophie in a, in a special way. And uh, as her church family, can we just pray for her? If you're comfortable with this, would you stretch your hands out towards her? And, and um, I even said, Sophia, why don't you run for office, for goodness sakes? We need some good <laughs> politicians. Lord, we thank you for this woman, this good woman. Lord, we thank you for raising her up at this moment, at this time. Lord, thank you for the message of this book. And Lord, we as our church family, we just pray for success, blessing. Lord, go before her. Lord, I pray that you open doors that she was not expecting to be opened. Just may they open up before her, God. And guard and protect her, Lord God. Lord, give her a platform for righteousness. In Jesus' name, we all agree and say amen. 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 Bless you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> amen.